Hi, I'm Richie. Welcome to the course. In this chapter, you're going to learn how to work with Spark using Sparkly R's dplyr interface. Before we get to that, let's take a moment to explore what Spark is. R is a wonderful tool for data analysis, but by default, the amount of data that you can process with it is limited to what you can store in RAM on a single computer. For many data sets, that isn't a problem, but when you have really big data, you can run into trouble. Spark is a cluster computing platform. That means that your data sets and your computations can be spread across several machines, effectively removing the limit to the size of your data sets. All this happens automatically, so you don't need to worry about how your data is split up. Spark R is an R package that lets you access Spark from R. That means that you get the power of R's easy to write syntax and the power of Spark's unlimited data handling. The icing on the cake is that Sparkly R uses dplyr syntax. So once you know dplyr, you're halfway to knowing Sparkly R. One potential problem is that Spark is new and Sparkly R is even newer. That means that some features are missing or tricky to use and many error messages aren't as clear as they should be. This is the price you pay for being a trendsetter. You need to expect a little pain to gain all this power. The most important thing you'll learn in this chapter is the workflow pattern. First you connect to Spark, then you do your work, and then you disconnect. Since connecting to Spark takes several seconds, it's sensible to connect once at the start of the day and disconnect again at the end. dplyr provides a grammar of data transformation. There are five main transformations that you can apply to a data set. You can select columns, filter rows, arrange the order of rows, change columns or add new columns, and calculate summary statistics. These transformations work on local data frames and on Spark data frames. Don't be afraid of the problems. I'll see you in the course.